What is up, everyone? Welcome to Let's Play Enslaved Odyssey to the West. Enslaved is a loose adaptation of a Chinese myth called Journey to the West. It was developed by Ninja Theory and written by Alex Garland of 28 Days Later fame and Dread 2012 fame. And I've been itching for an excuse to replay this one because the last time I played it was in 2010 when it came out. And thanks to Andrew M, I have an excuse to. Thank you, Andrew. Uh, his request as the Extra Life Grand Prize winner was for me to LP this game. So, enough talking for now, we'll have plenty of time for that later. Let's start this thing up, and I think we'll play on normal. Welcome to Slave Ship 909, en route to Pyramid. You have been assessed and any injuries sustained during your capture have been designated as non-life-threatening. Remaining journey time is estimated at 16 hours. If you are experiencing severe nausea or need to relieve yourself, Oh man, oh my god. This is so much more beautiful than I remember. Holy shit. It helps that I'm playing on PC for this for the first time, but damn. I'm listening now for a Wilhelm scream. I know there's one in he somewhere around here. Wasn't there. Uh, so we're introduced to our protagonist, Monkey. He's a big, agile, nimble, a uh, brutish type of dude. And we come to on this airship, captured, and there's a girl trying to escape, so we're gonna follow her, because she might be our way out. Ah, still no Wilhelm scream. God damn, this looks good. Yeah, this is my first time playing the PC version of this. I mean, it, it's... A pretty beautiful game on its own, but wow, they stepped up. The lighting especially is really nice here. Uh, so we have a, our first small taste of the platforming. It's pretty colored by numbers, nothing special. A lot of the gameplay is just passable, but they, the ga it really relies on writing and characterization to take center stage in this. There it is! I heard the Wilhelm scream there. And holy shit! This is a hell of an opening. It's really, really... Oh god! And the outside here, where you can actually see it! And get a sense of speed of how fast you're flying through the air on this airship. Damn, this is a good opening. On the platforming again, though, color by numbers, it's even more linear than, you know, some of the platforming you find in Uncharted games. Okay, cool. So, 
The ship is going down, but we have escape pods, so we have to find... Uh, go down. It's... Really, there's... It, it's almost impossible to fail most of the platforming sections in this. It's... You know, it's functional. Nothing to call home about. Just like the combat, it's pretty bare bones. We'll get introduced to that in just a second. Like, the, the, the animations and the visual spectacle of everything, spectacular. I think it really gets some of this stuff over, even though it's uh, pretty bare bones in gameplay. Where's my stuff? What? Huh? The stuff. Where's my gear? Stuff you took away from me. I can't talk to you. It's against the rules. Item storage in the lower hall. That's really harsh. Barely helps Monkey out. His helmet terminates him. Uh, so, yeah, we're in a post-apocalyptic scenario. And they do some really interesting things with the post-apocalyptic setting. Uh, but for now, we can't see too many of them because we have to get off the ship. Like Monkey said, now that we have our gear back, including a really cool, extendable, and retractable bow staff, uh, we can go deal with that combat mech down there that forced us to make a diversion. So, this is a Ninja Theory game. Uh, Ninja Theory be being of Heavenly Sword fame when this game came out. Um, it's a hell of a lot better than Heavenly Sword. It's not doesn't quite have the depth of DMC Double May Cry. Pretty infamous right there. Uh, it's Again, it's functional, so you have a light attack, a heavy attack, and AoE kind of get off of me type move, some range stuff, and you can charge up a stun. It's pretty bare bones, nothing really special going on. Like with the platforming, visual spectacle kind of gets it over. Uh, it is, like I said, a hell of a lot better than Heavenly Sword though. It doesn't feel nearly as stiff. Functional is the way I would describe it. Uh, so we're gonna learn about some more of our abilities here, we have a block. We saw before when we were running towards the combat mech, you'll kind of automatically shield yourself from bullets for a short duration of time. Uh, we have an evasive roll, and that's that, that about does it for our abilities at the moment. Uh, that and the stuff I talked about. Really like this shot in this room of all the, the doorman mechs hanging up along the walkway. Woo! Gotta get out of there a little bit. There we go. And uh, the combo variety isn't anything special. Uh, really though, writing and characterization and character development, those are the, the, the focal points of this game. And they also did some really advanced stuff with facial capture here and the setting and world building. So it's a lot more narrative focused than anything. Like the combat's just kind of there in the background. There are some cool things you can do. It does open up a little bit later on. But it's no, you know, it's no character action game. It's not even quite a devil, uh, no, nah, sorry, not Devil May Cry. It's not even quite like a God of War as far as hack and slash action goes. On uh, here, we're learning a little bit about charge attacks. They can be used as guard breaks, and they can just generally, uh, get an enemy to stand still. Stuff like that, though, those kind of Arkham Asylum-esque animations. Really, really cool stuff. Poster material. Oh, and we're back outside. I love this. I love how this is lit. Very kinetic. You can kind of get a good sense of speed. Hey! Hey! Open the door! You mother... Oh my 
God, this is so gorgeous. Now what? Like I, I would want, I would love replaying this just for the art and the the set pieces and stuff alone. I feel like there's a lot of good visual eye candy in this. That and I, I am a genuinely big fan of the story of this. <laughs> oh, this is super cool. Not here. Oh shit! Need to start up on that attack. It's just a little bit too slow. Let's get him off of me a little bit with that AOE. Yeah, there's stuff you can do with the combat. It's just, it, there's not too much depth to it. It's the thing. Oh my god! I would love that shot as a wallpaper. Yeah! Oh, this is cool. Really like this stuff. Um, it could do with being a little bit more challenging on all fronts, platforming, puzzle solving, combat, but eh. That word, I'm gonna come back to a lot functional. It serves as a vehicle to get the player from plot point and set piece to plot point and set piece, which, as long as it works okay and the rest of it makes up for that, for the weaker uh, gameplay, I'm kind of okay with that. And it feels really good to control. Uh, Monkey's very nimble, he's very agile. Uh, there's a lot of acrobatics from him. Gotta time this. Oh no, I'm gonna get roasted. Yep. Oh no, 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 no. I kind of jumped back there automatically by accident. I think I was mashing the button. Uh, yeah, there's a lot of crazy mo-capping that he has to do. So obviously Andy Circus is the one playing him and mo-capping him. Yeah, Andy Circus is kind of the go-to guy for that weird performance capture stuff. Same guy who played Gollum. Man, and this is silky smooth. Oh, don't roll. Yeah, so, oh god, I was getting caught up in the spectacle again. Um, yeah, for a post-apocalyptic setting and game, this is awfully bright and colorful and beautiful to look at. They, we're not on the ground yet, we'll see some of it more later, but they do some really interesting stuff with this setting. And, uh, I did mention that it's Alex Garland writing it, and he's a tendency to, uh, to turn really big cliches and tropes into, uh, he finds new ways and new twists to take on them. Oh, it's fucking awesome. I'm really happy I'm getting to replay this. Oh, come on. Come on, come on. Come on. Impact in very, very fun little game. And well written, which is pretty rare. Warning. Impact in okay, we have to get up to the escape pod that's seconds. intact. Nine. Don't have much time to do it. Eight.
God, my, my head feels like it's ripped open. It's the headband. <sighs> what? The slave headband. The one I fit on you. You put this on me. Let me explain. Get this thing off, or I'm gonna rip your head off. No. No? You think I'm screwing with you? Yes! Give me a stop! <laughs> Come in, move away from me! Oh. What the hell are you doing? I hacked a slave headband. So it could be activated by my voice commands. Activation triggers a systemic pain response. It's what controls the slaves. I'm gonna kill you. You can't. If my heart stops beating, for any reason, the headband will discharge a lethal dose. If I die, you die. Oh. <sighs> Why? I need your help. I come from a wind farmer community. It's about 300 miles from here. I'll never make it on my own. If slavers don't get me, Max will. That's the deal. Get me back to my home, and you can go back to yours. Looks like I don't have a choice. Neither of us do. I'm sorry. Okay. Let's go. Huh, the shadows are looking a little funky in some of those cutscenes. I'm gonna see if I can figure out what's going on with that and fix it for the next episode. Anyway, that's gonna do it for the inaugural episode of Enslaved Odyssey to the West. Stay tuned, because we have a lot of really cool stuff coming up. Cool scenery and character development, and a uh, lot to look forward to. I'm really excited about this game. For now, though, thanks for watching, everyone. Take it easy. Have a good one.